Are you serious? Hello, this is Out to Kill an Hour. My name is Marcus Bronzy. There's plenty of ways to kill some time out there. Thank you for killing some time in advance with us. Coming up on today's show, we've got somebody who is, IGN has said, is using Twitch unlike anyone else, and they are turning it into something new, witty, absorbing, highly entertaining. And they're looking forward to what he cooks up next. Well, I'm going to reveal who that is in just a moment. But um, first things first, I'm with my boy, Billy. How are you doing, producer Bill? Not too bad, mate. Not too bad. Not very sunny anymore. Very stormy and rainy and the sun is now gone. Oh, geez. Well, we're about to talk about a car, actually, which is my killer bit for this week. If you're new to the show, uh, killer bit is where we talk about some way we've been killing time. It can be an app, it could be a, a, a computer game, it could be a car, which it is today. But before we get onto the car bill, so last week in the UK and a week before, we have had our heat wave, our annual heat wave. And this year we were reaching temperatures of 39 or 40 plus degrees in certain parts of the UK. 40 plus in a city or in a country that is not designed for these temperatures is a big deal because we don't have aircon installed everywhere. Um, shout out to Kat Osman, actually. She's one of uh, the friends of the show. She, she's got aircon in her house. She's had aircon in her house for years, Bill. She's been ahead of the curve. She knew this was coming. But for us laymen, we did not have aircon. So how was the heat before, for you? Because I've got a little story to tell you. It wasn't too bad. You just have to just, have to just deal with it and it don't get stressed. Just sit there and deal with it. No, no moaning. Just what do you do? Yeah. Just like sit in front of a fan. Just leave a fan running just in the corner of the room and just, just let it do its thing. Bro, I'm, I can't. That's not enough for me. Even when I'm in the house, I've got I've start spraying. I've got water spray that I spray a mist over myself and stand in front of the fan to get that extra little bit of freshness. But um, you can't really escape it once it gets really hot. But I decided to book a trip to the safari with some family a few weeks ago, just before they announced it was going to be bloody hot. And I think it was friday which was one of the hottest days maybe it was like the 7th of august or maybe it was the week after that super duper hot yeah um and i was yeah it was definitely the 7th of august i was in the car at a safari with air conditioning all's good right yeah <laughs> you with us yep I was oh, waiting, i'm waiting us. for the i'm waiting for the the the, the change of pace here the change of pace bruv so it's all good yeah and I'm seeing 39 degrees on my dashboard of my car. And we've seen like rhinos, we've seen giraffe, we've seen gazelle, springbok, that kind of stuff. It's cool. Enter the lion area of this safari park, right? I start looking at my temperature gauge. It goes up to 39 and a half. Then it goes up to 40, right? Right while we're chilling next to some actual, like a, a a pride of lionesses, like some of the most dangerous animals. Lionesses are the ones that do the hunting. Lions in real life aren't, they don't really do that much. Lionesses, they like have the kids, do the hunting, look after family. They, they do a lot, right? Don't do much. Kind of pretty much that sight at the moment, isn't it? Really, men don't really do much. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so we're chilling there. And then I see the temperature gauge go f- from 39 blink, up to 40. And the air conditioning in the car that I was in, just said, nah, I'm done. And it just stopped. It just literally just cut off. And I'm like thinking, all right, cool. We've pulled up on these lines. We kind of want to see them do something. There's cars in front of us, so we can't really move out of here real quick. And I just had to sit there in a metal can in 40 degree heat, slowly cooking for about 15 minutes. It felt like I was in there for like two hours. And I was just remember sitting there going, it can't can't get any other than this please and you can't open your windows let's say yeah you can't open the windows can't crack the window for some air so that so you're just getting that hot air con that isn't really air con just going <sighs> like a hot breath breathing over you i'm slowly like getting wet my shorts are like soaking up all the sweat from my bottom and my thighs and the seat's starting to get slippy below me and i was like Ugh. and then but anyway one of the best situations was when we pulled out of the lion area about tw- in about 20 minutes time, obviously we could open the windows and get some fresh air. When the temperature dropped down to like 39 again, the aircon was like, yep, we're good to go, bruv. We're good to go. Got me thinking like UK cars aren't designed for that kind of extreme heat. When you get less, and I always wondered that, like when I'm in LA and stuff like that, when you get in a car, their aircon seems like so much more like proficient 
And uh, yeah, it was proven by my little experience of the heat bill. Other than that, I just, I just made sure that I was in front of a fan all the time. Think it's time to get aircon in the house though, Bill. Solid work. No, just open a window. Just open a window. There you go. Uh, anyway, yeah, before we start today's show, um, we've actually got our guest waiting in the wings. Um, but yeah, I actually, for my killer bit, got my hands on a Toyota RAV4 hybrid car. Now, hybrid cars aren't really anything new to the show, shall I say. Um, but Toyota, way back in 1994, released the RAV4. And it was kind of like a new look SUV, a bit rugged and the compact vibe of a hatchback. So it's kind of in its own lane. So Toyota have added their hybrid vibe to this. Um, now, yeah, like I was saying, hybrid cars are cars that obviously run on petrol, but they also have some sort of electrical battery type service that helps it run without using any fuel at all. Um, and the RAV4, that was its job, man, to kind of give you an experience of a rugged 4x4 and also have Toyota's well-known hybrid engine within it. So yeah, that's the car that I got to drive, Bill. Do you want to fire any questions at me before I start reeling off stats about the car? Uh, what's, the, what's the drive like? Is it, is it any different compared to like a regular car? Well, it's like a two and a half litre. So it's got a bit of juice in it. So it's got 215 brake horsepower, I think. And um, I think that's on the front wheels. And it, yeah, I am reeling off stats to you. Uh, and 219 on the all-wheel drive. But what, the, what makes a difference is because it's got electric engines in the car uh, and they work together with kind of the petrol drive i feel like it pulls off quite quickly so it's quite a smooth drive as you'd expect from a new car that's a four by four it doesn't feel very bumpy um but you find that when you like put your foot down it goes you know bill it, it's not it's not a slow car and it kind of uses all the best of the petrol and all the best of the electric at the same time and it's well known now that elect- everyone knows electric motors uh pull off way quicker than um, conventional fuel guzzling engines. So yeah, man, the driver's cool, it's smooth. I'm a six foot three guy, so there's plenty of space for me in there. Um, it, I did drive it as part of the heat wave. Uh, don't worry, Toyota, if you're listening. I did not take it to the safari, um, but there's aircon at the back and the front as well. We had quite, a, obviously, we had quite a nice spec'd out version of the whip to drive around with levers and all. And I feel like it was relatively easy to get in and just use it like I always for me with cars there are certain brands of cars that have really complex dashes and a dash for I kind of find this across most Toyotas are pretty simple there are other cars that are um, quite similar in looks of Toyotas and when you get in them they've kind of got buttons everywhere I don't really know what to press so the drive was pretty cool and it's pretty easy to kind of make things work on the car as well also Bill love the heads-up display right that shows you the efficiency of your car you make it like makes it into a little game. You can see like if you drive it a bit slower, yeah, you can see that you get way more miles per gallon. Or and if you do slow braking, you can see the energy being fed into the EV uh, engines as well, um, into the EV motors and batteries as well, which is really really cool. So I managed to get like, I think I got fifty five miles to the gallon from my week of driving on average. And kind of in a petrol car where you drive quite sensibly, you're kind of looking at 30, 35 miles per, the ga- per gallon on it as well. So yeah, man, pretty fun drive, Billy boy. It's not too bad, about 20 miles per gallon extra. Yeah, um, o- on that note actually, Bill, sorry. If I drive it for a little while and charge up the electric battery that it's got in it, it's, it doesn't just use the electric, uh, uh, the, should we say, it doesn't just use the energy that it saves immediately. It does feed some back into the engine, but if you get enough of it, when you're driving around town, you can actually drive it in EV mode, which you press a button and basically it just uses the electric motors. So that's really, really good. So if you, like, for example, did a motorway drive, drove quite sensibly, charged up the uh, battery a bit, and then when you went into a city, kind of drove kind of slow, kind of, you want to keep it under 35 miles an hour. Yeah, the EV mode kicks in and you're not using any electricity at all. Anyway, Bill, you're saying, sorry? No, you are using electricity if it goes into EV mode. Sorry, you're not using not any using petrol any. at all. Yeah. That's what happens. <laughs> I was about, yeah, I was about to ask, did you drive it in electrical, electrical only mode? <clears throat> yeah, throat. man. Yeah, I did it. I did it. So you'd find that if you went for a drive, like a 20 minute drive on the, on the motorway, 30 minute drive on the motorway, you'd pick up enough energy for you to do that. And also what it'll do is if you're slowing down in certain situations, if you're coming to a slow stop, say you're uh, on an A road or a dual carriageway and you're slowing down, it'll actually kick into EV mode automatically while you're slowing down because it understands that you, it doesn't need to give much power to their engines or, or the wheels because the wheels are going quite slowly. 
so or slowing down so yeah it'll kick in but yeah i've pressed the ev mode and driven around town get like a nice little five ten minutes of being like hey i'm using no fuel you know what i mean so yeah it's all right it's good work yeah man um what else do you want to know bill oh, man, i man i could talk about this i can just keep banging on if you want bruv I mean, I've just, I just, I was more interested in if you use it in electrical mode and how different it was to, how different it was to drive. Was it, was it smoother? Was it any more powerful? Was there, was it, I don't know. Did it feel different? It doesn't drive, it doesn't drive like a pure electric vehicle because it's not like a purely electric vehicle. You'll find that when you, as soon as you take your foot off the gas, off the gas, off the accelerator, it like starts to slow down immediately. But because it's got that hybrid vibe, it feels like an easier transition to petrol. Like I know a lot of people, when you're a petrol dr- car driver or a diesel driver and you go from liquid fuel over to an electric car, it feels really go karty like in a purely electric vehicle. Like you put your foot down, it goes, take your foot off, it stops. You can almost use the accelerator as a brake by taking your foot off it. It slows the vehicle down. Do you know what I mean? You don't necessarily need yeah. to brake because um, those engines, that's just how those engines work. Um, what else did I do? With it? It's, got, it's actually got all-wheel drive as well, which I think I flicked for a couple of times, but I didn't, I didn't really need to do it. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, it's got all-wheel drive. Um, and if you're going over a bumpy road, it's pretty, it's pretty smooth. Um, I'm trying Any to gadgets think of, and gizmos inside. Yeah. Yeah, that's the trail mode, like really that I just mentioned. That's the that's the you know, you slap the button on the center con- console and it kind of gives you a bit of extra torque to the grounded wheels on the car, which I didn't I didn't really use that much, if I'm honest with you. Do you know what I mean? because uh, I wasn't really doing anything crazy. Um it's got Apple Play, which I uh, Apple CarPlay, which is a big deal for me. Um because I just like to plug my phone in and crack on and kind of have a similar interface. I don't really want to have to learn a second interface on a car, which is quite important to me. Um, Adaptive cruise control. So when you flick it on, you're going down the motorway, it slows down if a vehicle in front of you slows down a little bit. Also does it in slow moving traffic as well, which is nice. I don't like to have to keep braking and putting my foot on the gas. Um, Try to think about it. Yeah, yeah, it's got uh, that a as lot, well. A lot, a lot of cars have lane assist now. It's one Mate, of the things too. If you ain't got lane assist, then you ain't got uh, adaptive cruise control. What are you doing with your life, really, as a car? I kind of expect that. Um, what else have we got here? Sound system's all right. JBL sound system, pretty punchy as well. It was just an all-round nice drive. And a couple of people that I know that pretty fancy, yeah, pretty fancy, were like, oh, that's a nice car. What's that? And I was like, it's a Toyota RAV4. They were like, oh, that's nice. Like, as if they were like, they weren't, they were, oh, I didn't know that was a Toyota RAV4. But yeah, man, it was an all-round nice drive. You get me? It's Good. it's reasonable. Um, we got the full pricing up on the website as well. I think this, the, the spec I had was about 37 or 38K. Um, so they're going to start at less than that. But yeah, man, Toyota RAV4 had fun with it. Cool drive. Looked good. Had, oh, had a massive boot bill. The boot was enormous. Big deal that for me. I like the boot space. Trunk. I, I, I did sit in the trunk. There's no picture of me, but I did lie in the trunk because it's like a thing. If I can get in the trunk, it's cool. Um, but yeah, man, no. It, it, is, it, is it doing standout crazy stuff? No, but it's doing what it does well, which is it's a good hybrid vehicle, a good way to introduce yourself to being a bit greener. Uh, if I could give it any improvements, Bill, and I'd say this for any kind of hybrid car at the moment, I've got this feeling, just want it to do more, to have a bigger battery capacity. Like, I just would like that. I'd like to rely more on the, uh, the electric. electric. Um, and I'd like, they've getting very good at making sure that a lot of the drivetrains pump back as much electricity into the vehicle, electric batteries as possible. But I'd just like that to be better. Why? Because well, why wouldn't you want it to be better? Do you know what I mean? And I wouldn't mind to be able to do like EV mode at like 40 miles an hour on a, on a dual carriageway. Like 35, 30, I think 35 miles an hour was the fastest I was getting before it, it refused to turn on because it's not like an electric car. But um, yeah, it's pretty cool, man. Enjoyed it. Good, good. Yeah, man. Right, anyway, I think we should introduce today's guest. He is a comedian who is absolutely using this whole world-changing scenario that is the pandemic of coronavirus to totally reinvent what he does and his comedy. His name is Bilal Zafar, a.k.a. AKA Zafar Cakes. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to admit him into this room that we have right now and just surprise him and see what happens. IGN have said that you are unlike anyone else. You are turning Twitch into something very, very new, witty, absorbing, highly entertaining. I look forward to what Zafar Cakes cooks up next. How's it going, man? Welcome to the show. 
I'm good, thank you very much. Um, how you doing? I'm good, thank you very much. Now, this is a podcast. Mainly people will hear it. We do put the video up and clips. Now, mm-hmm. what's great about Zoom is you can be anywhere in the world right now. You're in Hollywood by the looks uh, of things right oh, now. Oh, I didn't. Yes, I am. I forgot. I changed my Zoom background for every call usually. Okay. I'm in Hollywood. Is it coming up backwards for you or is it forwards? It's forwards for me. All oh, right. It should be. Oh, okay, so it's should, not flipped. Should be back. I'm funny when it's. I'm in podcast studio London, so uh, yeah, I'm really see. there. I'm actually really there. I Look. love that you've made your green screen can be anything, and it's your <laughs> studio. <laughs> but when people, so, honestly, if over the weeks, over lockdown, a few people have messaged me who have come to the show new, come across, and have gone, "Nice studio, mate. It's really interesting to see that you can still record in lockdown." And I've stopped trying to explain to them that this is actually a green screen. I've just said, "Great." Can they mate. not tell with your like parts of your body disappearing? Do you know what? When I got the green screen, yeah, and I've turned that because I've not got the green screen behind me today. Okay, of course, it's down. But when I got the green screen down, it does look a bit better. There's a little bit less of a of a feathery edge around me when I'm in front it's, of the camera. That's the thing with the green screen, man. It's um, it's it's a it's a lot of hassle sometimes. Like I tell, I try and tell new people that want to get on Twitch. Um, I try and tell them not to bother with the green screen unless you really need it because you need all the lighting and everything. Otherwise, yeah. you don't. The grey, the green edge is just horrible. Yeah, no one likes a green edge, and no one likes no. it if you if you wear a top and you don't realise that the top colour that you're wearing, if you're like me, might have a little bit of blue in it, but you don't see it. You're like, that's grey, and then or, and yeah, then yeah, you yeah. jump in front of the camera, or a little bit of green, and you jump in front of the camera, and then you just start looking like a ghost halfway through your show. I bought a yellow tie for my Pez United thing because I wear yeah. a suit when I stream, and it disappeared. On <laughs> it just disappears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because yellow is too close to green, which I. That was stupid, I guess, but yeah. I hear that. Right, right. we want to talk about Pez United today first, but Bilal, I feel like before we do that, let, can, we, can we cast ourselves back in your career? Can we, talk about, sure. can we talk about how you got into comedy? Because, you know, that is what you were known for. You're a funny guy uh, on Twitch, but you were a funny guy beforehand. But how was your journey into comedy? So I went off to uni to study like script writing and stuff because I wanted to be like a writer for TV, like a comedy writer for TV eventually. Yeah. That was my sort of plan. And then I realized, I guess, so it's a three-year degree. I think in like my second year, I realized that that's not something that's going to happen. Like, it's not that easy. You don't just get a degree and then suddenly you're writing for the BBC kind of thing. Well, it doesn't work so like it that. Was, no, unfortunately. They make it seem like it does when you're 18. <laughs> Hang on, I thought if then, you get a degree, as long yeah. as you get over a 2-1, you were guaranteed to be running the BBC at some point in your career. No, you need a rich dad. Oh, and fuck. Dad. And he's, to he's be white really as well. rich enough. That helps. Yeah, yeah as well. That's like a credit, isn't it? It's like, if you're, if you're slightly le- less rich, but a white, then, you know, that kind of, kind of evens it out a little bit for you, doesn't it? You know what I mean? Exactly, exactly. But uh, I had what, none of those things. What uni did you go to? Uh, Bolton University. Bolton is- University? Bolton? Yeah, it's Fuck not a good why Bolton? You're not from Bolton, because, are you? right? No, no, I'm from East London. Because um, they had a course which was film writing... Uh, sorry, script writing and filmmaking, and right, not a lot right. of unis offered that. It was right. made, it was a lot of theory stuff everywhere else, or it was one or the other. And I didn't know yeah. what. I, like, I thought I might want to be a director one day. I wasn't sure. And actually, it turns out I'm not very good at the practical. I can't hold like holding a camera and stuff and framing stuff. I'm not that good at. But the writing side, I think I'm quite I'm quite good at. Um, yeah, that's why I went there. But in and I've done stand up about this. But in my second year of my degree. It's a three-year degree, so it's halfway through. Bolton University was named bottom of the list of unis. (laughs) Literally. You know how you have the thing where, like, the clever kids look at Cambridge and, like, Warwick is up there and stuff? Yeah, Uh, yeah. Literally the bottom one. And obviously in your second year, it's too late to get out. So, yeah. So you found out in your second year that Cambridge, (laughs) Oxford, I think it's Buckinghamshire is another fancy uni. Your uni, education-wise, was the polar opposite Mm. And um, I want to be honest with you, bro. I too went to university in the northwest of the UK. I went to UCLan for the same oh, that's reason. A, that's a decent one, though. Yeah, it's decent. Oh, yeah, it was decent. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to be like, oh, I went to the better one that's up the room. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's better than everything's better than mine. <laughs> what, what, what did you what? study? I studied media production. Okay, similar. So it was like, yeah, for the same reason as you, like, I was, every uni I went to was like, I was like thinking, oh, I really want to get into TV or radio and they were like so the first thing we're going to do is read about how light enters a camera and i was like well i understand that but that's that's surely that's like 
a different job. So then I've, I, I went around loads of unis and, and UCAM was like, look, see all that shit? Fuck that. We're going to do practical picking up the camera and shooting stuff. We're going to find teach you how to make stuff. Um, not as much writing and filmmaking as yours, but I think kind of just more getting your hands on a computer to edit, learning That's how great. to do stuff, which I think kind of pays pays dividends nowadays really because it means that you know i'm kind of i get it how it works do you know what i mean yeah 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 no it's massive it's, it's tough isn't it because like you got to make that decision when you're sometimes 18 years old which is how yeah. old i was and you don't know what you're doing no no for, mean, the whole, for your whole life you've been told you have to study everything bro yeah. you have to study everything you have to study a language science english duh, 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 and then at a levels you get a little bit of choice yeah which yeah. really isn't choice and then they go right go on pick a pick a course then and you're like what mm. and i hated everything. it by the way i've i've always hated education like i'm just like that i just I, I just i much preferred life once i left even though i had like <laughs> crap day jobs for a while and stuff i still preferred being out of that thing where you're told what to do and all of that i don't know yeah. what it is but um yeah just a rebel I like, I, like, I like the social side of, of uni. I've got to be honest, I found I made some friends for life there. Um, and I did learn stuff. I'd be an arsehole if I said yeah. I didn't learn loads. But like, I think there's a lot to be said about the education system, especially nowadays oh, yeah. on the, when we're recording this on the 18th of August. There's a lot to be said about the UK <laughs> education system and how they're God, cheating yeah. young people. Like, oh, I'm not jealous at all. Like, just to bring you into perspective, if you're not from the UK, one of our listeners that's overseas, in the UK... They've decided, and correct me if I get this wrong, Bilal, because I'm not too savvy in the news all the time, but they, they had decided that they were going to create an algorithm to decide the results you would get because you couldn't make mm. your exams physically because of the coronavirus. And the, and the algorithm people had worked out was basically taking people from, from state schools and giving them shit results and people from quite nice schools, which you pay to get into, uh, giving them quite good results. And everybody kicked up a fuss and the government's turned around and said, actually, we're going to allow teachers to actually go, right, well, this is the grade that I think people deserve. So teachers are getting a lot of treats right now. Yeah, Man, it's it? shot like the, the people that would predict like three A's or whatever were getting like BBC or, you know, um, and that's... Um, you know, like for, for media people like us, it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> but like for people that want to be doctors and stuff, it's, yeah, it's, it's potentially ruining their life. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Um, I'm lucky that it wasn't as bad when I was at school and uni and stuff. So like it was the year. So I started uni in ooh, 2010. Yeah. I think. And um, it was the year after me that is when they trebled tuition fees. <laughs> That was the year after. So it's, it's about three grand when I was doing it per year. And then it's, yeah. it just went to nine grand a year. So I was going to do a PGC. That was my original plan. Yeah. Um, I didn't have a, like, I thought, um, okay, I should try and be a teacher. I thought that's a good thing to do. So I was going to do that, but it would have been nine, 10 grand. Yeah. So, Mad. you know. Man, imagine yeah. that. You go and learn. You come out th- uh, three years later, like 35 or 40 grand in debt because mm. you've got your student loan as well. That's a mad way to start your career, isn't it? Here's your career, horrible. 40 grand in debt, and you're not even guaranteed to be head of the BBC if you do a course like yours as well. <laughs> That's course, unreasonable. So you did yeah. Bolton University. I mean, there are, yeah. you've got to admit, though, before we move on to like your, your jobs that you did, uh, like uni has got a charm, though, hasn't it, Bilal? Yeah. And like Bolton's got a bit of a charm as well, hasn't it really? It does. It does make you learn a lot. Like how, like it very quite, like, I don't think anyone would mind me saying it's quite like a boring town. Like everything shuts at five. Yeah. Um, It's different to London. It's like a very different pace. Uh, But it was, it was nice going out there, especially being like, like I say, I was was about 18 when I, when I first went up and um, you learn so much just living by yourself in it and cooking and, making too much pasta and everything. It's all very important. Um, it's very important in becoming an adult. Um, yeah. So yeah, in that sense, it was good. And then, and then after, and then I graduated and I moved to Manchester for a bit where I was doing stand up more regularly, basically. Um, not, not to a level where I was getting paid yet. That took a few mm. years. Mm. Uh, but that's when, yeah, you mentioned like, that's when I got, I, I just got my day jobs. Uh, the first thing I did was that I was a care worker uh, in a massive care home in an area called Hale in Manchester with Hale Barnes, which is not that far from where a lot of footballers live. So it's like mm. a really fancy bit of Man- like Manchester, I guess greater Manchester, you'd say. Um, and everyone I was caring for were like, I'm pretty sure they're all like millionaires in their life. Cause really? 
yeah, I found out. So I was, <laughs> I was on minimum wage. So I was on six pound fifty an hour, right? Yeah. Um, a lot. I, I found out that these residents, some some of them were paying ten grand a month to stay there. Jesus, jeez. Yeah. And then they had me with a media <laughs> degree, keeping them alive. <laughs> oh man. Well, it is kind yeah. of known that um, care homes do make a lot of money, mate. Very profitable oh, business. High stress terrible. as well, I reckon, to run it as well. Like, was it was it was it a specific type of clientele? Was it just older people that were kind of older people? Uh, it was like two floors, right? Quite a big care home. It was assisted living downstairs, yeah. and then upstairs, which had to be all like secure and like you needed the code to get in and out and stuff. It was people with dementia. Okay, so right. they don't they don't know how old they are. They thought oh, yeah. I was like their brother and stuff. It was it was yeah, it was a very interesting time. Um, we weren't allowed any calendars up there because if they saw what year it was, it'd freak them out. So it was all, um, oh, shit. yeah, I was actually going to do a show about it this year. I was going to do my stand up show, going to take it to Edinburgh. I would have been there now losing money. <laughs> <laughs> I was, yeah, I was going to, I was going to do a show about it, which I was excited about. And then, you know, obviously, obviously this thing kicked in, which kind of was a, and I'm going to choose my words very carefully because I'm not talking about the whole situation, but for you, I feel like a, a blessing in disguise, this whole scenario, right? Kind of like it's, it's a weird one because when it first started, so I remember, was it uh, March when it was really bad in Italy, mm. like 800, 900 deaths a day kind of thing. And um, our government hadn't done anything yet. And I could just, it was obvious that it's coming here. And so in my mind, I'd already thought, right, Edinburgh's off. They can't do that festival in quite a small city with like thousands and thousands packed in. It doesn't make any sense. Um, and then, you know, literally just got started getting loads of emails about gigs being cancelled, all the previews for Edinburgh that I had booked in, like some really nice stuff just all disappeared. So I'd say for about, a good like two or three weeks, I just felt horrible, like um, properly like panic attacks and stuff. Cause it's like my year is just gone. And with my work, cause obviously I'm self-employed and um, I don't, I don't have anything else really. And um, it all depends on kind of how well I'm doing at the time. Um, I don't have any like uh, guarantees, basically. You don't have that with stand up. Um, Again, unless you have quite wealthy parents, which a lot of comedians do, um, you just, it's, you just, it just depends how good you are and how well you're doing. So I thought I'm just going to like regress a year, basically. I've just lost it. Like, what do I do now? And then luckily, um, I thought about streaming on Twitch for a while, uh, but I just didn't have the confidence because I'm not really someone who like, I'm, I'm not good at doing like those Instagram videos where you film yourself doing something funny. I won't be good at TikTok. I'm not like a YouTuber, you know what I mean? I don't have that kind of confidence. I did, stand up is very different to all of that. Um, and I thought I'll, I'll have some fun on Twitch. So I started off just streaming some casual games on there. So I guess should, I should explain what Twitch is for people because people still don't know. Um, yeah, man, please do. Please. Yeah. <laughs> it's, basically, it's basically a streaming site. So think of like YouTube live basically. But Twitch is its own thing where it's, mainly people streaming a game which means that they're playing whatever generally the latest game like Fortnite or you know whatever's really big and it's their head in the corner of the screen uh you see their faces they're playing it and they're talking over it and i can't explain why that's popular to people because it's hard to explain to like like my parents for example um, do you know what quick i'll quickly jump in there do you know what you have to say yeah. to them goggle box goggle box oh, if you watch point, that man. it's the same thing isn't it that's interesting. It's the same thing, but even more real. Yeah. In a way, because more can, and you can, you can talk to the person on screen. I think that's a really amazing thing. Exactly. Yeah, um, yeah exactly that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like to describe it as you're watching because I've, because a lot of people watch me on their TVs. That's how people watch Twitch. Mm. Um, I like to describe it as you're watching a great TV show that you love, but you can talk to it and it might talk back which is like the best, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so that's what it is. So I started off just streaming like uh, like Portal 2 is quite a popular like puzzle robot. Quite mm -hmm. a, it's quite a nice game. And I got, I, I did that a bit and I got a bit bored of it. I thought this isn't really my thing. Um, I don't really like just talking about my personal life and stuff like that either on stream. So um, eventually the idea just came to me of playing one of my favorite retro games, which is uh, pro evolution soccer five to uh, yeah. Uh, Pez five, which is a game that was out in 2005, which it was the first football game I really got into when I was like 13, I think roughly. 
Um, and I thought, I'll just play that again. And then I just had the idea. I bought a green screen and uh, like a, a ring light and stuff uh, for quite cheap off Amazon. That arrived and I thought, right, well, if I'm going to be on screen, I should just be the football manager. Um, just wear a suit on my top half. And that was literally it. I thought, and also when I did that, I thought this is an idea that I'm sure everyone has done kind of thing. I didn't think it was original, but it turns out that like no one has done this specific thing at all. Like I get compared to this Dr. Disrespect guy because I guess he's changed what Twitch is in a way and he has lots of crazy backgrounds and stuff, but still it's not, it's nothing like him. Um, yeah, and I started with me playing the game. I, all I have to do is very easy. I just change the background to like a dressing room, do a team talk, change it to one of those like, you know, where football managers have their interviews after games. Yeah. You can get Sponsor those off Google. Screen, yeah, yeah, those Sponsor things, screen, yeah. yeah. Just do a like a post-match interview after, be a bit like Mourinho type, you know, blame the ref and sort of moan a little bit. Um, and that's all it was. And then gradually it just grew from there where I started giving uh, players voices um and then obviously the next thing after that is you start putting storylines in and that's it really and it's just i've just kept it going for like i started in late april uh what are we now august i do it three times a week do you know what i want to talk more about how your streams are going on now but i think what's really cool about your story is that it's really organic like so your first stream when you kind of put donned on the suit and started mm -hmm. off as united it was really different though, wasn't it? It was literally more gameplay, right? And when you say storylines, you kind of threw it in, but like you kind of gone from there to like there's whole episodes now where there is no football yeah. whatsoever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, when I first, it's quite funny watching the very first ones back because like even the voices I do for the players are like rubbish. <laughs> like it just sounds like, it clearly sounds like me doing a voice, whereas now I'm a bit better at that kind of thing. And, and the whole thing is much more slick and looks better. Um, yeah, like it was, yeah, I didn't really know what I was doing at first. And also, it was a bit of a mess because, um, have you played Pro, Pro Evo? Oh, it's yeah, man. I, lo I love Pro. I love Pro. You love it, I was yeah. a, I was a pro. I was always a pro. You know, it was Pro or FIFA. It was FIFA. Me too. I was always like Pro because Pro's the simulation. FIFA's the game. I'm a sim yeah. guy. That's what it was. FIFA's for children, isn't it? FIFA's like basically if somebody was to give you Street Fighter and if you just pressed one button it did all the pun all the different types of punches for you. No, whereas Absolutely. if you have a full simulation game, I feel like when I play FIFA, I'm actually improving my real life football. Uh, when I play Pez, I'm improving my real life football skills on the pitch. <laughs> wow, that's, that's, <laughs> that's quite a statement. <laughs> it's it's true, hundred percent true. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah, so like when I started, so I okay, so I switched from Pez to FIFA in like 2012 when Pez had a bit of a dip, like some of the games got quite poor. Yeah. Yeah. You um, yeah. So going, playing Pez 5, right. I thought the problem with the stream might be that the game is too easy for me because I was so good at it when I was 13. Uh, and then when I played it, man, it's, it's not, it's hard. Different, like, right? It's, it's really not easy. <laughs> like the thing, the difference with FIFA is that like, um, like a through ball, for example, on FIFA, you just press triangle. And it will go straight through to your striker. So easy. Or you do a cross, it will land straight on someone's head. Yep. In this, you have to time everything yep. um, or you'll give it away. Like, um, and so when I first started, I was just, I couldn't score and I just kept losing. And it was so frustrating. And I just thought, I, I don't know what I'm going to So I was like panicking about that. It's quite interesting as well with streaming. Like, it's a bit like, uh, it's a bit like stand up or I guess even podcasting anything where when you first start, you're full of like panic <laughs> of anything going <laughs> wrong. And it's like now, like if you had a technical problem and like, I don't know, your internet went off or whatever, it's fine. You just call me back and I know you anyway, it's all right. But like, if it was your first podcast, you'd be freaking out and all flustered and stuff. Yeah. And I got like that on my first streams where if something went wrong or I had a small tech, like my controller stopped working once. And I, I think I was blushing. I thought everyone is going to leave. Uh. Like this is the end <laughs> basically. But that, that's, that's not what Twitch is like. Everyone is very patient they're there for the whole thing. So even like if I start rambling about something, if I pause the game and start talking rubbish, it's all part of it. It's like a full, the whole thing is entertainment. Also, people don't necessarily watch it like they're watching a film. They, they sort of, um, they can have it on in the background. You know, a lot of people stream for like four hours. That's like quite common. Mine tend to be maximum two hours usually. Um, yeah, sorry, I can ramble quite a lot, by the way. Continue, please crack on, crack on, mate. Uh, what was the, did I answer your question? 
I just asked how you were today about 30 minutes ago, and this is, this is where we are. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I no, have, I th- the thing is, I have, a lot, I have a lot to say about Twitch, you know? Yeah, no, and I think it's great because I think the reason it's really interesting talking to you about it is that you're not super long in the tooth, so, but you have yeah. been doing it for a while, so I feel like it's quite a relatable conversation for those who want to get into streaming, which I'll ask you about later, you know, if you want to get into streaming, what are your tips and such? Sure, sure. But it's just interesting to hear from your point of view, because you're, you're enjoying this really lovely explosion. Yeah. I mean, like for example, IGN have had you, you know, covered you a few times really with regards yeah. to your content. And I was like, for you, was that quite interesting when you had one of the world's, if not the world's <laughs> biggest outlets for kind of uh, gaming yeah. journalism saying, Hey, we want to hit you up because you're doing something different on Twitch. It was ridiculous. Cause like I've got, I've got management that look after me and they have a, a PR side and they try and get me some stuff. So yeah. quite nicely, they got me, I told my management, I want to write for The Guardian about Twitch. And they got me a little article where I got to do that, um, which was amazing. And then suddenly, like out of nowhere, um, IGN did a tweet about me and they'd written an article saying binge this series because I stick it all on YouTube. Uh, and that was crazy. It turns out a few of the guys that write for IGN and stuff watch my stream because they just really enjoy it. Uh, and then they did a little documentary about me on YouTube as well. Um, yes, it's crazy. Like that you can't get better PR than, and also like, I know IGN really well. I used to, I I hadn't looked at it for a while, but it's where I used to always read stuff on there about games years ago. I know it's a massive thing. They've got like, I think they got like 7 million Twitter followers or something stupid. Um, and I started getting all that thing of like, cause they said the Twitch streamer that's reinvented the platform. I got loads of those like American kids being like, no, he hasn't. (laughs) <laughs> Doctor disrespected that and like just really angry <laughs> but that's when you know that it's going well and, yeah, yeah, like yeah. when you start randomly getting not abuse but just people saying what you do is rubbish without even watching it which I, yeah of i don't course. mind um, of course yeah it's been really nice and i've got i've got some other stuff uh coming up that i'll i can't really say i'll tell you about it when we finish <laughs> recording but it's, <laughs> it's all very nice and also like it's just the chance to be creative like this for me it's just incredible because like um, basically, right, the situation I was in before is that I've been doing stand up for like, what is it, like seven years? Yeah. 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 About seven years when I did like my first open mic kind of thing. And then in 2016, I got nominated for an Edinburgh Award, which is like a big, a massive hype thing, right? You don't get any money for it or anything, but you're nominated. I didn't win the thing, but still a nomination is considered a really like important thing. Um, and then honestly, for about the last four years, it's just been meetings about stuff. Uh, and I've turned a lot of stuff down because most of the stuff has been like, uh, do you want to do this Muslim thing? Do you want to do this Asian thing? And it's the thing is, I'm not against doing that sort of thing, but it's really cringy stuff. Like basically it's always written by a white guy and it's bad (laughs) and they want me to basically come on and make it. Okay. So I was asked like the most recent one I was asked to come in as a writer and star in some show uh, about Muslims, totally written by a white guy. And I was like, what? And it was also, it was rubbish. Like it was, it was like, uh, I shouldn't be too specific, but I don't really care. Um, It was about like a couple of detectives who are like lapsed Muslims who pretend to be religious to get in with this community. And then it turns out there's some terrorist or something. And it's like everything I hate. <laughs> um, and the thing is, cause you get the email and it says like, Oh, do you want to be like a detective in a thing? We'd like, and I'm like, I love detective stuff. Uh, I was really excited. And there's you, you thinking that, oh, no. you're going to get your Luther on your, your touch exactly. of frost on your inspector more. So you thought, yes, Sherlock. I've made it. There we go. The wire. I've got this. <laughs> the wire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the British wire. Yeah. Um, that's top boy, isn't it? To be fair, sort of. Um, yeah. And then, and then it's always that it's like you scroll down an email and it's like, Oh no, it's because they've seen like your name and your color and stuff. And it's basically just based on that. And they probably wanted a more famous Muslim anyway. <laughs> and they've sort of gone down the list cause I'm not on TV or whatever, you know? Yeah. Um, and so it's constantly been that. So literally to the point where I was pitching ideas to TV and radio and stuff, which, so I was told by an Asian producer that um, I have to Trojan horse my way in, which means that I pretend it's an idea about being Muslim and then I get to do my own thing. So I was writing up these ideas which were like that. So, which is kind of depressing, but you don't really think about it when you're doing it. You don't realize how unhappy it makes you at the time. Um, And now with Twitch, I'm just a football manager. Like, 
and so many people like I get between it's it, the the viewers are really up and down depending on obviously what's going on, but it's between like I'd say five hundred to a thousand people tune in. It's uh, a considerable live. amount of people live yeah. watching you and following <laughs> you, just sitting there watching your every move. Do you know what I mean? It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Uh, like I, yeah, I can't believe I couldn't believe when I had like fifty. I thought that is that because that's a good gig. If you do a yeah. gig in like a small like a basement room kind of thing with like 50 people like packed in. That's good. That's a great gig, you know? Yeah. Um, and now to have this many is just, yeah, it's unbelievable. Exactly. And, and I think like, it's really interesting that we've kind of, I mean, look, I'm not, I don't want to be establishment bashing because I think big companies do hold their place within media, but don't you find it interesting now that between say 2000 and, even 2010, right, where you were enrolled at uni and then had your journey in comedy and all the way to 2020, how the kind of things have shifted where it was probably fairer to say in 2010 that you needed to have the award nomination and then mm. blow big on the BBC with a Trojan horse kind of script. Whereas now you're more likely to be able to find that you can find your own audience and be more yourself. Cause if there's one thing that is very interesting about Zafar Cakes, uh, stream, I feels, I feels we'll call you Zafar Cakes. We'll call you Bilal. What do you, what do you prefer, <laughs> bruv? I don't mind. Oh, yeah, cool. When I'm watching your stream is that like, you're just having fun and also being yourself. And mm. like, I feel like some of the biggest things, the biggest bits of progression I've made within kind of my career in terms of things going really well, getting a big project on has always come off the back of just being myself. And when you got that award, you got that award mm. for being, or that nomination, you got that nomination for just being yourself with your comedy. And between mm. then and now, maybe you've been trying to tweak your stuff to kind of fit it into a box to get that commission, to get that thing done. And now, yeah, yeah, yeah totally. By being yourself again, not through pure choice, but through it having to be a necessity. And you've kind of, there you go, your growth has started again. Yeah, it's like, it's all, literally all I'm doing is work. It's like, I've, I've not reinvented myself on my stream. I'm just doing my stupid humor constantly, yeah. just improvising it. Um, another thing which is, which makes me really, really love Twitch is, it's free to watch or you can subscribe for a five or a month, but you don't have to, you can totally watch it for free. I think yeah. you don't even need an account to watch. Obviously you need one to comment and stuff. And what I realized as well with comedy is probably part of the reason I've been a bit unhappy is because like in Edinburgh, right? There's a certain type of person that goes to Edinburgh. I wouldn't have gone to the fringe if I didn't do stand up. I honestly didn't know what it was until I started stand up. It's not my world, right? I grew up watching TV comedies with my brothers, films on TV, going to cinema, um, that sort of thing. That was our thing. It's what you can afford, isn't it? We, I never went to the theater. I've never, I've never seen a musical like live. Mm. I, it's not really what I do. So like suddenly I'm in this world where I'm respected by all these posh people, like the people that run the comedy awards in Edinburgh, they're not like me, you know, they're proper, like, you know, they're posh theater people basically. Um, so around that time you have all these, you know, you have all these papers recommending you and all of that stuff. And then again, it's just, I'm not saying that they're all posh people, but it's a certain type of person that goes to Soho theater to, I don't know. I don't know how much my tickets were. If it was like, 15 quid or something but that would have been expensive for me growing up to yeah. you know me and a friend paying 15 quid each when, when we can go cinema and get like a <laughs> discounted student ticket it didn't make any sense so um now it's like for the first time in in my in like in my career i i think i'm getting people watching me who are like me because before i i didn't have much stuff online so you could only see me live and yeah, if you're, if, if you were like how I was growing up, you, you wouldn't go to like Soho theater or I wouldn't, yeah. no, or like, or you wouldn't go to the Edinburgh. Fringe. It's so expensive. Have you been to Edinburgh for the fringe? I've gone to the fringe once. Cause my friend yeah. had a show there and I didn't, mm -hmm. I still don't, I still don't understand it. I, I, I don't understand. I get it. There's lots, I get it, but I don't get it. So there's like loads of, from, and this is correct me if I'm wrong. So there's loads of people that were like pitching their shows live on the street. So my friend's yeah. like theater production was very physical. So they had a fake street fight going on for like oh. 20 minutes at a time. They must have been knackered. And then That's people tough. would be like, oh, there's a fight. And then they go over and they'd be like, ha ha. Not, well, they didn't be like, ha ha. They'd be like, no, we're not fighting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when, the, when the police come, they're like, ha ha, police. Um, they keep out a flyer saying, this yeah. is our show. Come and see yeah. the show. And then, it's a, and then everyone has to kind of 
have their own cool way of getting people to come to their show. Yeah, I, I mean, mine was different. So I do it the com- comedian's way where you pay for PR and you get all these papers recommending you and like The Guardian hopefully put you in Sick. top shows to see and all of that stuff. And then I have someone flyering for me because I don't really like approaching people on the street yeah. personally. Oh. So I have, yeah, I have people just flyering and saying, come and see this. And then I've got all my little credits on my flyer that's how it works for a lot of comedians or you can fly yourself but that the theater side is totally different that's the thing Mm. um but yeah it's like but even to go up to the fringe it's so expensive so my brother comes up usually when i'm up there and it's like all the all the um bread and breakfast there right It's, it's ridiculous so for the rest of the year there'll be a standard price and then for the month of august even if you looked like I'm pretty sure if you were able to check for next year's August, yeah, uh, in Edinburgh, all the bed and breakfasts are like a hundred pounds a night minimum. Jeez, yeah. So my brother managed to get an Airbnb for like sixty five quid a night, which is okay if you're going for like two three days, but obviously not if you're living there for a month. So mm. for me, it's like I have to share with a bunch of people, and it's not always going to be the best. It's just so expensive. So it's just all, it's just like it's all against you if you're like working class base, it's like you're not welcome there. That's how you feel when you go up. So now to have Twitch is like the total opposite of that, which I didn't think was possible. So, you know, like I tried the, the, the time I met you, I started a podcast with a friend who's a comedian and I thought, okay, that might be a way to sort of get to my audience, which I haven't got to yet. Kind of thing. People that might like me didn't really take off. It did. Okay. Um, it was it was quite a cult, very niche podcast. I was proud of it. I think it was really funny, but oh, it's a great take off. And then I did like a, I did a web series as well at like the start of the year. And again, I'm very happy with it. I think it's really good, but it just didn't take off how I, how I wanted. I think lockdown might have been a problem as well because do you remember when lockdown started? Everyone was putting out content, even though it wasn't yes. very good. Everybody had a lockdown podcast for every day. I was like, yeah. bruv. We can't all do this. We can, but you've yeah. got to make it different, son. <laughs> there was a lot of, hey, yeah. day one, biscuits. Yeah. Day two, <laughs> exactly. crisps. Day, I was like, no, yeah. no, no, crisps. no. Yeah. Um, but like, so the problem I had is that I put my web series out at that time uh, and I was clashing with like, you know, very famous comedians doing yeah. very short little Instagram videos or whatever. So people had enough stuff to watch. And so they weren't finding me. So it was all these. So I ha, it's not like I hadn't tried before Twitch to be an online person. Um, but yeah, now it's like I've, I've found the thing that works best. And also it's great because I clip out bits of the Twitch stream, put them on tw- Twitter, which really helps stick them on YouTube. I put the full streams up on YouTube, which people really like because Twitch, I think Twitch isn't always the best to watch stuff back on. Uh, people much prefer you it's just much easier to use youtube so every night i upload the full stream straight to youtube edit some clips sleep quite late <laughs> i hear that i was gonna say it must be quite a bit of work at, at, for you at the moment like in terms of doing stuff because you are writing a show now like you're writing in like i said i, I didn't say it flippantly and this wasn't an, an out of place remark your episodes now some of them don't have any football whatsoever like we have a yeah. a new character who's uh quite demonic in his demeanor and Risa. you uh, yeah <laughs> you, you went over you went over to Reese's house and yeah we that did was a surprise. So, I should say though it doesn't none of it is scripted it's just like a few bullet points and it's all improvised so like serious yeah 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 so um the first time the Reese thing happened was I just gave him like a kind of scary voice and I wasn't sure what he was at first but he just kind of goes like thank you sire and I thought it was so funny that he called me Sire and it made me laugh for ages on the stream that I'd done that. And that just carried on as a thing where something has happened. We're not sure what, but he's either, he's got possessed. I might've had something to do with it. I might be possessed now, <laughs> but it's not, <laughs> it's not very clear. And he also might be a vampire. Like it's not, you know, it's, it's not, it doesn't really make sense. So yeah, we had an episode. So what, oh, I should tell you, there's a structure that I do. So normally on a Monday, it's fully improvised, just play games and be a manager. Uh, Wednesday we have a guest on which is like a person who's part of the club so like the owner of the club or um, I don't know all sorts of different roles um, and they're usually a comedian that I'm friends with I just get them on to improvise some non- they don't even know about football most of the time I give them some bullet points and we improvise mm. and then on Friday we do some crazy thing where it's a pre-planned thing so like yeah so last Friday I did 
one, I think it was one of my best ones where it was a seance. So we went over to Reese's house, which is a castle, um, like a haunted, haunted castle. And I had like a Ouija board thing, which by the way, it didn't, t- that wasn't hard to set up. That only took like 10, 20 minutes to, to make all of that. It really wasn't as hard as it looks kind of thing. Yeah. And bats uh, and got stuff some, flying around as well. That looked pretty cool. Just a gif or a gif off, off, off Google. That's all it is. And you put it in, it's quite easy. Um, and then all we had was discord um, where people, so discord, basically it's a bit like zoom if people don't know discord, but gamers use it. I guess that's the best way to describe it for now. Um, I just had people lined up. I just put a message. Out. I said, if you want to be on this as a caller, I didn't tell them what was going to happen. Uh, just let me know. And then I just, I just called the people one at a time and we were like, spirit, are you there? And then each person was like the spirit of a dead football fan. Uh, whatever. There's a character that everyone loves called Barry who's quite an angry Pez United fan and he died, which we didn't know about, but he came oh. back on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which, uh, by the way, is played by my brother, uh, okay. Barry, which everyone is always wants to know who it is. But yeah, it's, it's my brother does it. And we had, I had a few uh, viewers just call in and just say some fun stuff and they were all really good. And I had uh, Suze Kempner, who's a comedian, was on as the spirits of Dead Stenders characters, which was incredible. She was so funny. Like, Again, all improvised, but she just stole the show so much. She was Dot Cotton, uh, her Dot Cotton son, Nick, who she killed. <laughs> and she was in hell with him, yes. killing him again and again. <laughs> yes. Um, and she was Pat Butcher in heaven when we called her again. And Peggy Mitchell as well. Or if you know EastEnders, they're all like iconic characters. Mm. Um, and it was incredible. It's like... Yeah, like as a comedian, you don't, you don't get the chance to do this usually. Um, you don't because everything you do has to be so like considered and you don't get to just have fun because it's like your time is so precious now when you're when you're previewing a new show you can't waste your stage time you know if you've got a good audience and you have to try all of your best ideas out there's not much room for silliness yeah you know yeah it's really like the whole i mean is it fair to say the twitch audience as a whole is probably one of the nicer audiences online you know what I can't say that because we, we had a thing uh, a month, maybe a couple of months ago called Blackout. No, no, it wasn't. I think, hold on. I think it was a Blackout Wednesday and it wasn't to do with the uh, Black Lives Matter thing. It was to do with, well, it was partly that actually. It was to do with all the abuse on Twitch that mainly women get and, and really? there's a lot of racism. Yeah, because it's gamers, isn't it? There's the whole Gamergate thing. Yeah. So they're all on Twitch and nothing gets done about them. So they, they're anonymous. They've got a stupid name. They can come on, say whatever they want. They get banned. But that's the end of it. They can make a new account and come back. So luckily, I've not had anything that bad yet. I've had a few people come and be rude, but I just ignore them most of the time because luckily the chat is quite busy. Mm. So like, it just disappears. Um, but yeah, female streamers get a lot of, as it, you know, that's the case with women anywhere generally, get, get, tend to get some of the worst stuff, worst creepy stuff. Um, yeah, I've, I think I'm quite lucky that because I'm a character, when I'm the football manager, how do you give me abuse? Like it's kind of hard to do. And also I'm quite aggressive anyway. So I tell my viewers to shut up randomly (laughs) as a joke, but I'll just say, shut up, mate. Like over very small things and get quite angry at them because I'm this unhinged football manager. Um, So I guess maybe that's why. So I I think if you're on as yourself, it it definitely, I mean, it happens everywhere. I'd say it's definitely nicer than Twitter, which is just like hell. Yeah. Um, yeah, Twitter at the yeah. moment is 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 just not a fun. Like yeah. some of the most ridiculous things on Twitter. So yeah, I noticed that with Twitch. Can we talk a bit more about your character as well? And his um, he's 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 got an addictive personality. To be fair, hasn't he? Can we chat <laughs> yeah, about that? Bit so out? yeah, sure. So, <laughs> so what happened is right at the start of the stream when I only had I'd say th- between I don't know it was actually between like ten and fifty people at the very start. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I was addicted. So hot Pepsi is the drink that we drink. And that just came from, (laughs) I was just drinking. uh, I I don't know what I was having. It might have even been water in the cup, right? And someone said, what are you drinking? And I said, it's a hot cup of Pepsi. And that just stuck as the thing. And that became our sponsor of the club as well. Is Pepsi spelt wrong? Um, That was the thing I went with. And then I would add something to my Pepsi and I would add so I can't remember how I was doing it, but I was adding a little bit of liquid in. And I set, basically, I tried to deny it, but it was, um, it was cough syrup with codeine in it, which um, <laughs> that's, what, that's what rappers drink yeah. in America, right? Uh, it's called, 
lean or lean on that lean yeah yeah and i thought it's quite funny that this football manager is drinking is addicted to a drink that rappers drink in america i thought that's quite random and then as time went on as i was getting more viewers i realized like you can't you can't make jokes about taking a real drug um so then literally one stream i had like not a mouth ulcer i had wisdom tooth pain which was really annoying me and i had some bongella and i was just taking it on stream uh and i was being quite animated that stream anyway um and it looked like the Bongella was doing that to me. So then it turned out I had a Bongella addiction and then that became a thing. And I sort of took that as far as I could to the point where I had to have an intervention. And <laughs> I took my golf cart on the motorway um, <laughs> and I went to the golf course, which is my favorite place. Yes. And all my players were there and they sang Fast Car to me by Tracy Chapman, obviously. <laughs> um, <laughs> And that, yeah, that was, I was, I love that. I really love that stream. Um, yeah, that, so, so there's all sorts, there's room for all sorts of things, all sorts of scandals that I've not even done yet. Um, there's, there's still loads more to come hopefully, but yeah. I, I think there is. And you know, and also there's a little bit of football in there as well, which is, it's yeah. just cool too. Um, so in terms of kit, what's really interesting is, is that every streamer has their own kind of setup. They have elaborate, you know, mm-hmm. fancy lighting in the background or they have a green screen. For you, how important was that in terms of getting your stream out there? So obviously the green screen is hugely important because without it, I couldn't do the fancy background stuff and I wouldn't want it to look like, it couldn't be my bedroom and yeah. to be wearing a suit and being a manager. It wouldn't make any sense. So yeah, it was massively important. Um, but like you go one step at a time and I try and tell people that when I give them advice, I'm like, you don't have to spend like a thousand pounds so at first my setup was the logitech c920 which is the standard like streaming camera which i think yeah. i got for like 80 quid yep. uh ring lights are like i don't know they're like between like 10 and 30 quid on um on amazon the green screen was like 30 quid my pc cost about 300 pounds and i bought it mainly for editing it's not really a gaming pc so i can't play the latest stuff on it um so yeah, and also my microphone. So I got like a good, I got like a fancy one now. But um, at the start, I bought an Amazon Basic mic, which um, I think it was like twenty five pound, and it was really good. It broke. I don't know what happened to it. I don't know if that's the mic itself, or I banged it or something. Mm. But it, it it went all muffly basically, so I had to get a new one. But um, so the, obviously the kit is very important to get started you can't do it with, like i wouldn't advise streaming without a webcam a, a webcam because i've seen people do it where it's just a voice and it's just not as fun you don't get the connection with the person um and again i wouldn't stream in silence either people do that people stream and you can't see them or hear them and it's like why would i want to watch this yeah yeah that's a bit that's odd. just yeah that's how i watch twitch though like some people watch it for the gameplay i watch it for the entertainment so i tend to watch people that are quite funny and it's their personality. So like Limmy, for example, who's a good friend of mine, he sort of encouraged me to get on Twitch as well. He's so funny on Twitch. Like he plays like, he plays like Dead by Daylight, which looks like quite a fun game. I still don't really understand it, but I watch it for the entertainment of it all and him getting frustrated and him laughing when he manages to kill all the people. And st- you know what I mean? Mm. Um, so yeah, I'd say obviously the kit is very important, but you don't have to, uh, I wouldn't say you have to splash out at like loads of money like in fact i wanted to do an article uh so my the guardian thing i wrote originally i wanted it to be about how twitch is like the theater for working class people because you can do shows like you can do you can do as many shows as you want and your setup can be like 400 pounds yeah which you can make back through twitch uh and the people watching watch for free which is the complete opposite to having to have like uh you know, acting training uh, or like paying like 50 quid for a theater ticket and all of that nonsense. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's really brought the barrier down, hasn't it? With regards to access. And I suppose, uh, you know, I'm not going to ask you for like details, uh, like financials, uh, but you know, it is a sustainable career, isn't it? Twitch you can, and we have seen people, you know, have a career out of it. Do you know what I mean? It's a good way to supplement things, especially if you are a comedian who can't get on stage live at the moment. Mm. yeah well like I, I don't want to get too excited but right now it's very it's, it's good i'm making a nice amount of money monthly but obviously i don't have any guarantee with it so i don't know if my subs could drop off and if they shouldn't you know they really shouldn't but it's it's not like no, I'm don't you dare contract. you should not 
no 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 no, no. i won't by the way i'm determined not to oh don't i was actually talking that. to your subscribers saying don't you dare oh, unsubscribe I, no not you, i thought you were giving me a like a pep talk like an aggressive no. oh no a pep talk but for yeah. you would sound so different okay thank you you've got this man uh, come on yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah uh thank you um so yeah but you know you don't want to get you know when you start getting something it is on a month by month basis yeah like you're never going to get the paid the same amount monthly unless it's like a fluke basically. So it will always go probably up and down. I have to, I guess I have to judge it after a year. It's only been, I started in April I've, cause you have to become affiliate first and then you can become a Twitch partner, which is the top thing, which I am now. Uh, I've only been paid three times by Twitch so far. Right. So it's only been three months of actual like right. proper subs where I get paid kind of thing. So you can get, uh, only get paid to, when you're a partner then. No, no, no. Affiliate. Okay, when you're affiliate, you okay, which cool. is easy. It's very easy to get affiliate. You need like an average of like three viewers, I think. And oh, you have to good. stream a certain amount of hours. So you, you can get that easily. Um, yeah. But then partner is, yeah, it's just slightly more money. And yeah. Mm. You know. But affiliate is still brilliant. So, Bilal, I've got to ask you this question. Yes. Comedy yeah. is something that you can't do at the moment in the way that we used to conventionally, right? Conventionally on stage. If everything disappears tomorrow with mm. regards to this pandemic, how are you going to feel about stand up again? It's a weird one. Like, uh, I don't know what I'm going to do in terms of certain things. I don't know what I'm going to do with the Edinburgh Fringe because I could obviously try and go up there and stream from there, but I think that might be massively overworking and that might not be good for my health. <laughs> um, I am not, I've already decided I am now no longer going to do stuff I don't want to do. I've done a lot of work over the last like four years that I don't want to do, but I've had to because I needed the money. Like uh, I did like some BBC video, which I absolutely hated and they made, a, it, they made it rubbish, right? Which I mean, they know they did. It's fine. If they're listening. Uh, yeah, they said, basically they said, so I had a green screen behind me. They said, what we're going to do is we're going to animate all these little things going across the screen and behind you and stuff. And I was like, that's great. And then they didn't do that. They just cut to animations. But for green screen, when you're doing it professionally, they have to put loads of makeup on you. So I just had all this makeup on for no reason. <laughs> and like, and the, the, the screen was still green, I think, which looks bad, what? in my opinion. I think so. I'm not going to look it up, but yeah, I think that's what they did. So, and I did that for like, I don't mind saying, I got like 500 quid for it. And so at the time when I got the email, I was like, well, it sounds crap, but I mean, no, to be fair, I didn't think it sounds crap. I thought this isn't what I want to do personally. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm being too harsh. Um, <laughs> but then I had to do it. And then I had to, and they, I think they paid me late as well, which is great about being self-employed. You get paid late quite often. Twitch doesn't pay you late, by the way. Um, so I was constantly, I was having to chase the payment. And it was that, that was my life, basically. It was, it was always that. And it's like, you realize that's why I was unhappy because <laughs> you think I'm a professional comedian. Now I should just be happy. Like what's up. And then you, Oh, it's like, no, I'm not doing anything I want to do. <laughs> yeah. I think that's what truly frees you as a creative is when you can have enough choice, finance, time, space, you know, to kind of think about things where you can say no to things that you don't want to do. I think that's probably one of the hardest things sometimes to say no, but also one of the most empowering things when you can just say like, you know what, that's not for me. So yeah, that's, that's very, very interesting. And I'll, I'll always be checking out your comedy stuff. But to be fair, with regards to your script writing, you are still pursuing that in a way on Twitch as well, right? <laughs> kind of. I mean, <laughs> also, I've been asked, I mean, again, like, I don't think I'd, you know, I've been asked about adapting this to TV and stuff, my Twitch thing. And it's all, I don't know what to do because I kind of feel like Twitch is better than TV now. Like, unless you were getting a really huge thing, like no disrespect to some TV channels, but it wouldn't make sense for me to do, to write a thing and then go on a channel where like, it's not necessarily going to make me huge. Like, like, you know mm. how, like we've, we've, with comedy stuff, um, it used to be the case that you go on like mock the week and you're a celebrity now, or you go on, I had a friend who like, he went on like, never mind the buzzcocks years ago. And then suddenly he's like huge on Twitter. And that's not the case now because there's too many of these shows. It's not the same either. Like mm -hmm. people don't, they're not as popular as they were. So even with that, I guess I have to be a lot more picky now. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Yeah, but I'm going to keep, I guess I've got to keep, I've not done, sorry, you, you were asking about a specific thing. 
No, that's all right. We'll get back onto that. Don't worry, mate. I got you, bro. Crack I just on. missed what you were asking. Crack on. So what you were, I don't mind. You can even leave that in because I quite, I like it. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> uh, the thing that you meant about script writing, I'm sorry. I, I, I forgot as I was so thinking, so much thinking about the Pez thing is that I'm literally writing a script uh, every Saturday at 8 p.m. Um, I started a thing. And again, it's like I just, I was doing a random stream where I got, I got quite bored and I thought, right, I'm bored. Let's write a script. And I just got the script writing program up on screen, which is very easy to do. I had myself in the corner there. And there's a, so basically this is based on, so Limmy, that streamer that I'm, I, that I really like, he, um, he, he is a coder. That used to be his job. He used to code. And one stream I just started make like kind of not making fun of him, but I just started saying that if you're in a, like there should be a film about you starring Jason Statham called The Coder based on your life. And I said, okay, let's write that. It's like a stupid action film. And what I do is that right now, every Saturday, I, um, I, I literally write the script on screen and I have the chat suggest stuff that goes in. So it's like a stupid action film with lots <laughs> of twists and turns, uh, loosely based around coding. Uh, we've got Jason Statham, Benedict Cumberbatch. We've got Madonna in there now. Uh, I love it the way remember. you say it. Like they're actually, they're actually oh, signed yeah, yeah, in. They, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got We're Madonna locked in. People. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got, uh, obviously, Simon. Si- what's he called? Simon? No. Uh, Stephen Merchant. Stephen uh, Merchant, obviously. A, yeah. a, a geeky guy, obviously. Uh, lots of gunfights. Uh, it's just turned out that um, there's all these like soldiers that are like after the coder. Yeah. And he's just figured out that um, they're all like clones of him. And that's where we left it last week. <laughs> yeah. A copy and paste job. He said that. Oh, yes. He said, <laughs> he said they've only gone and copied and pasted. <laughs> uh, and that's, I think that's where we left it. So, um, yeah. That's, uh, that's where we are. So we're, we're like 11 or 12 pages in or something. And I want to do the full 90 pages. Like, mm. why not? And then I don't know if, if Jason Statham has like a sense of humor about that sort of thing. And if I could ever get him to do something with it, I've, you know, I've got no idea. But um, I'll knows? definitely do like a script read through, like maybe when it's done with some like actors I know. That'd be cool. That'll be wicked, man. If you need somebody along, I'm, I'm well involved. I don't think I can do a Jason Statham though. You're going to have to find somebody. You all right, mate? What's going on? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That, that's how we kind of, yeah. I mean, that's I'm Jason fine. Statham. Yeah. Jason Statham. That's Jason kind of Statham. how I do it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it's, the one. It hurts your throat though after a while. That's the thing. You'd, I need a lozenge or two, like, you know, exactly. between scenes. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, it's wonderful. That's amazing. And honestly, like, Bilal, man, I'm just happy that you've kind of used Twi- Twitch to find your audience and you're having fun with it. I think one of the things that we lose sight of, even I lose sight of sometimes, is when I'm creating stuff for like you, the listener, you know, is that we're just here to have fun, man. And like, we, we should be having fun with it. Do you know what I mean? And it's a blessing mm-hmm. that you can jump on every week and interact with a bunch of people, whether you're in yeah. your suit, managing your team, <laughs> drinking the hot Pepsi or sucking down a blue tube, tube of the blue stuff. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> the blue tube, yeah. It's the blue tube. Yeah, it's really, really good, man. So thanks, man. And, and where should we go for you uh, to find you on Twitch just to be super clear of our audience? Sure. So it's twitch.tv slash Zaffa Cakes. That's mm-hmm. Z-A-F-A-R Cakes. Yeah. Uh, one word. Uh, yeah, I stream right now most days of the week. So like, it's quite nice as well because like, I'm trying to get you on Twitch as well. We've had that conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like, happening. Yeah. It's quite nice that once you're a bit more comfortable with it, you can just jump on and do whatever and just have fun. So like today, so tomorrow I'm doing a Zoom gig with Sarah Millican that she asked me to do a while ago, which is quite nice. Um, but I've not done stand-up in so long. I don't even remember what my material is that I was sort of doing. Uh, before lockdown so I'm gonna just do a do a stream tonight uh, about yeah 6 p.m tonight all about stand-up and I'm gonna prepare my set list and talk about that because people are really whenever I do like a thing where I let people ask me questions about myself uh, they always want to know about stand-up people you know find that really interesting so yeah I'm gonna do that tonight and yeah yeah I look forward to seeing what you do on there um, I feel like you've ch- you've changed the game, so I'm really open minded about kind of what we think we can kind of bring to the table with regards That's to great. to getting on Twitch. And I think likes of yourself, Limmy, um, you're kind of pushing it in directions that I wouldn't have expected people could put would push it in. So, yeah, man, I'm I'm involved. I don't think this is the last you'll hear of how to kill an hour and and Twitch and and yourself and that moving forward, man. Hundred percent. But yeah, 
All right. Well, thank you for joining us on the show today, man. And I just want to let everyone know there's plenty of ways to kill some time out there. Thank you for killing some time with us. I've been Marcus Bronzy, joined by Zafar Cakes. Actually, before I let you go, one more thing. Yeah. Zafar Cakes, where did that come from? Um, so, yeah, the, the name Zafar Cakes firstly came from, it was when I was in sixth form. So I've, I've had the name for a while where we had, to do, we had to do this blog thing as part of a project. It was actually really good uh, for media studies. And um, uh, I just, it just sounded, so Zafar, I would pronounce it as Zafa. And it's just a bit like Jaffa. So it's just Jaffa Cakes and it's Zafa Cakes. And then okay. that has been important for me because in 2016, my Edinburgh show was all about when people online, like racists online, thought that Zafa Cakes was a Muslim-only cake shop. <laughs> uh, <laughs> as of a rumor my brother started um and so that was really important and now it's my twitch name so it's always been quite a yeah so, so i've just stuck with it i really like it as a name so, um yeah all right that makes sense i, I, I could i love the fact I, that twitter was just absolutely fuming with a uh a bakery that's only for muslim people i love i love the fact that twitter could come I, up with that and believe it as well your brother's also a g whole, yeah, yeah, yeah. He does that sort of thing all the time. Yeah. So um, the fact that also it's not a business idea that would make any sense. Like if you turn someone away, if they're not Muslim, like you yeah. wouldn't sell much. So the whole thing didn't make any sense. So again, like that was just to expose how stupid like bigots are, right? And I thought yeah. that's what everyone would see it as, but no one really saw it like that. They only like, I mean, like producers and stuff, they only saw it as, okay, what else can you do with Muslim stuff? And so that was quite disappointing, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> yeah. you know, but I still, yeah. I want to get that show filmed, hopefully, like now that I might be able to put a bit of money aside, hopefully, and fund it myself if I have to, or get a sponsor or something. And I'd love to, because I don't have the whole show filmed. I've only got segments of it. Uh, uh, it was an hour. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, all right, cool. Let's look, I look forward to, see, I look forward to seeing more bits from you. Is your bro a comedian as well? No, I'm just lucky. My family's quite funny and silly. So he's always quite excited by what I'm up to and he always tries to get involved. So yeah, so he's joined in on my stream a bit. So um, he's, so the first sort of call in thing I did on my Pez stream was a, a, a phone in show, a bit like talk sport. Yeah. And he was Barry who was like a really annoyed, like angry fan. And then it turned out he was only 14 years old, even though he had this really <laughs> like this really deep kind of Cockney voice. Um, yeah, oh, and then I he died, it. and then he came back in the seance. And do you know, you know why he died? It's because he was working on the building site, and he wasn't wearing the right footwear, and he was wearing Heelys. Ah, uh, see, Heelys, Which, all, all, all the fun Heelys have. They look like they're fun, but they are just... It's just... Yeah. You, I'm just waiting for accidents to happen when I see exactly. wheels. Exactly. You can't, can't wear them on a building site, you know. can't wear them on a building site. You might want to get from, you know, you might want to get to that concrete a little bit quicker, but it's not yeah. worth it, mate. Don't get wheelies. Don't, don't do don't it. Don't do it. Don't do yeah, that. I'm so um, glad they don't do them in my size. Otherwise, I'd probably be crippled right now. I'll I'm sure honest. you can get them. Don't tell me that. I'm told myself that I can't get them. Now that you've told me that, but I may have wheelies. <laughs> yeah. Heelys, um, right? Is it Heelys or Oh, wheelies? Heelys. Sorry, Heelys. Sorry, Heelys. Yeah, because the, the thing you do wheel wheelies on my the, Heelys. It's in the heel, right? And then you yeah. just... How do you do? You put your feet up. You, put, you, you lean back in the most unnatural way possible and don't yeah, yeah, die. Yeah. That's what happens, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, look, we've stolen way more than an hour of your time, brother. And you know what? It's been really good talking about everything that you're doing with Twitch and, and, and your comedy. And yeah, I'm just happy that you're, you know, you're in a good place, man, moving forward. And, you know, at this time in the world, people need to see that there's different ways to kind of get the job done when it comes to doing comedy or entertainment or just, you know, having some fun out there. So yeah, I look forward to seeing your stream. Um, Ouija board was very interesting so I'm looking forward to seeing how that whole scenario goes as we move forward and um, yeah if you need a voice for the coda I'm, I'm all over it mate <laughs> cheers alright cool thanks uh, for having yeah. me no problem man it's been hard to kill an hour thank you for killing some time with us